Good to be here today. We are having a love celebration today. As a matter of fact, this good month we're wearing red, uh, some of us, to uh, uh, heart month, love month. So anyway, uh, we're welcome today. We're going to have a good time. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Union Oak Amy Zion Church here as a part of the Lawnburg District, where we believe that we are looking ahead and standing on what God has said. We are so excited about what's going to happen today. Not for anything that we're going to do, but we're excited because God is in this place. I believe that this morning is going to be a blessing to not only the youth, but to the children, to the adults, that everybody who steps into the house and who tunes in live on Zoom. We thank you so much for your time, energy, and support, and most importantly, your prayers, and continue to look ahead as to what God is doing here at Union Oak Amy Zion Church. God bless you, and thank you so much for coming out. Good morning. I'm just so excited about being at my home church, Union Oak AME Zion Church, where our pastor is the Reverend David Gilcrease. Today, our youth department is going to just be overjoyed, and they are going to just present for you today, Love Conquers All, our very own pastor, Dr. David Gilcrease, as I speak in the spirit, will do our presentation for the morning, our very own district director of youth, Ms. Charlene Evans, who is also a member of Union Oak Church, is here. The youth are here. It is getting live here at Union Oak Church. We are just excited about what God is going to do this morning. We just pray that today will be the day and the beginning for the youth to see the thing that God has for us, that love does conquer all. Good morning, everyone. My name is Charlene Evans. I am the Laurenburg District Youth Director, and I'm inviting each and every one of you to come out to our first in-person program. It's actually gonna be hybrid because we're here at Union Oak, my home church, and we are also on Zoom with our district Zoom link. Please join us today. This is our youth program. We wanna always support our youth department. They are our future, and we're talking today about love conquering all. Coming out of a pandemic, kinda of still in it, we want to make sure that our youth know that we are here for them and that love does conquer all. And we want to love everyone with the love of Jesus. Come on out and join us, and we invite you to just enjoy the program. We're going to have a great speaker who happens to be my pastor, the Reverend uh, David Gilchrist, and we just want to enjoy the Lord and just bring our kids back together in person out of this pandemic. So we invite you to come and join us. We want you to pray for us that we do what God has for us to do. I have standing next to me our uh, Lawrenburg District Youth mm -hmm. President, who also happens to be my daughter, who is a senior in high school this year, so we're gonna lose her here in a little bit, but she'll do great things. And Allison, you can tell them what we're doing. Hi, my name is Allison Evans. Like she said, I'm the youth the district youth uh, president and I'll be presiding over the program today and we just want to invite you to come out and fellowship with us. Hi everyone my name is Timberly and this is my daughter Brittany. We're here for the Love Conquers All program. We're super excited because our youth get an opportunity to gather together and fellowship on this Saturday morning. Hi I'm glad to be here to be with lots of youth and see how to love God in many other ways. Thank you. Okay I am Marilyn Pratt, Reverend Marilyn Pratt from Freedom Chapel Mammy Zion Church, and we're here today to help the youth celebrate their day. So have a good time while you're here. Good morning, welcome to Union Oak. Welcome to our youth conference here today with our theme is Love Conquers All. Truly love does conquers all. I am Marie M. Lilly, and I've been at Union Oak for many years, and one of the things that I do is take temperatures, and write your name as a part of our COVID, um, our COVID protocols here at Union Oak. I also do some other things here at Union Oak, such as decorating. So if you come to the back, you'll see some beautiful decor. And also the theme is Love Conquers All, along with Black History Memories. So this is just a few of the things that I do. So once again, welcome to Union Oak and Love Conquers All.
Thank you. Church. My name is Allison Evans. I am the district youth president, and I will be presenting the program today. The theme of our program is Love Conquers All. We will begin with an opening verse of What a Fellowship. Master Mondale, are you online, my brother? what I want you to do for me. I want you to go ahead and pull up the scripture now. And what we're going to do, praise the Lord, y'all know, y'all, but we've been doing Zoom long enough to know that sometimes it just don't work right. Amen. And so what we're going to do now, we're going to ask, I'm going to ask uh, Solomon, Solomon Gilchrist, come on over. Reading, if you will turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You all knew it was coming. By Bible readers, you all know that is a very uh, popular chapter when we talk about love. I'm going to ask, sir, if you wouldn't mind, if you could read verse 1 through 7, would that be all right? Okay. All right, you can go right over here to the microphone, my friend. Yes, sir, you can get, you can get me later. <laughs> That's the sun, y'all. <laughs> If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Mm -hmm. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own ways. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in the wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, 
hopes all things, endures all things. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. We will now have our prayer by Master Trayvon Monroe.
then we would like to ask our choir if they could give us a selection. <laughs> My kids, you know, this you know, we just do what we do. So we're gonna have the offering, they're gonna sing. After the offering, they're gonna sing a song to march down, and I see McLaughlin Chapel is in the house. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen.
O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee.
If I turn things up too bad, y'all tell the pastor and I'll, I'll have a conversation with him. Right. He might just be all right. But how y'all doing this morning? Bright and early. Amen. One peppermint. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 
What's the zip code? Eleven twenty four. Yeah. Okay. Now, the ladies, the ladies, you can blow on you. You can have any stuff you want. Seriously, no strings attached. You can ask my members. I'm not trying to cheat. You can keep whatever's in the cup. Which cup would you prefer? You would prefer this one right here? Go for it. Do I take it back to your desk? Give a hand. All right. Daniel, come on over. I know you're also in the children's group. I know it's a youth program, but we want our children to be involved too. Amen? Amen. All right, Dan. You got an empty cup. Delaysia got one, and we got one right here. Which one you want, sir? <laughs> All right. Does anybody want a cup? Anybody want a cup to take to the house? All right, here, here, Makita, take this cup to the house. We'll make some Kool-Aid and put it in there. Thank you, girl. And we choked and we laughed because as the children came up and they looked in the cups, they were able to determine the value of what was in the cup because they could see. Now, Delaysia probably don't want all them candy canes. I don't want all that. She said, but you know what? I might want this peppermint because I see that the peppermint is in there and that's what I'm going to take. Right. Daniel came up here front like he had to think about it for a minute. Y'all see how fast that hand went down and grabbed that cup of candy canes? <laughs> Let me get these things before you take them away. Uh -huh. He saw the value and he acted on the value. The problem is, for those who are young and those who it's been a while since we've been young, the reality is oftentimes we don't recognize value because we don't see it. It would be easy if our life was like these red cups with the tops open and you could look in and see. If we could see and quantify our value, then maybe, just maybe, we would all have a different degree of a positive self-image and positive self-esteem. And when I talk about positive self-image, let's get stop away. I know, y'all might have grew up like me. Don't brag, don't brag, you can come home with a report card, but don't brag, that's good, but don't brag. As believers, many of you nod your head, you know what I'm talking about. Many of us are taught to not brag or be humble. And, and that's a good thing, but anything in excess can become a bad thing. If your children do good at school, it's okay to pat them on the head and say, good job. If your son scores the winning touchdown or your daughter shoots the winning three-pointer, there's nothing wrong with you jumping up. Hey, baby, go ahead! You are not teaching them to be arrogant. You're teaching them to value. Now, here's the question. What do we value? We value what God has placed inside of each of us. Let's go to the word. Somebody, he ain't took the text yet. Well, it's, it's Saturday morning, but that's okay. How many of y'all ready for the word? Amen. Yeah, see, I knew y'all was ready for me. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah. In the first chapter, verses 4 through 8, I'm just going to read these four verses. Now, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nation. Then I said, our oh Lord God, truly, I don't know how to speak. I'm only a boy. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. This is important for us. God is speaking to Jeremiah. We, we oftentimes, uh, for those of you, my young folks, y'all read Jeremiah? Read Jeremiah before the week is over. So you got two days off from school next week. You got time to read Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah was a prophet. And a lot of times when we read the prophets, we sometimes jump to the end. And we see them as these great men and women of God who are bold and daring and brave and are willing to tell you, thus says the Lord God. But we sometimes forget that before Jeremiah was the prophet Jeremiah, he was the boy Jeremiah. He was the insecure Jeremiah. He was the worried Jeremiah. He was the Jeremiah who said, why you want to use me? I can't do that. But as God is speaking,
speaking to Jeremiah, God reminds him clearly that even before he was an embryo, God had a plan for his life. And what we mean now is that God has a plan for you. Amen. And it, the thing about Jeremiah is the problem that many of us tend to face. We base our value on what other people see in us. And if other people don't value us, then we immediately begin to think, what's wrong with me? I can't do that because so-and-so said I can't. Now, I can't leave this position. I'm sorry, we got adults in the room. I can't be over this board because I don't got the right money or the right education. Let me come back to the youth for a minute. I can't be on the team. I, I can't be in this club. I can't do that because of what somebody else said. But sometimes, if we were honest, talking to y'all at home on Zoom too, if we were honest, sometimes the person depreciating us is not the people around us. We talk to every day we look in the mirror. Amen. And whether it's because people have told us a certain thing growing up, whether it's because we've chosen to believe the lies of the enemy, regardless of what the reason is, at some point there are those who simply say, I knew he couldn't do it. We take that, we follow it away, and we make it a part of our life purpose. Mr. Hurley, you and I were talking about the Panthers this morning, man. My son likes the Panthers, too. I don't know what's wrong with y'all, but I, I love you anyway, brother. I love you anyway. And we laugh and we chuckle when it comes back. I got you. How many of y'all like the Panthers in here? See, you in good company. You good? You good. When it comes to sports and our team is bashed, we'll stand up. Y'all Christian education director, she's a great member, but I don't understand. She likes the Cowboys. I don't understand. Let me be careful. I, I might want to be careful. I can't say too much about the Cowboys because clearly based upon what I'm hearing, there are many Cowboy fans in the house. Very interesting. So a wise man knows to be very careful about talking down about the Cowboys because there are other people around who when I speak down on the Cowboys, they'll jump in and make sure I know what's up. So why is it that in the house of God when we see people putting our bones and sisters down, we don't jump to that house of God before. Times the focus 
is on the outside, and sometimes we neglect what's on the inside. Well, I brought the table out there, and I figured, you know, y'all don't have to move the camera, so I'm just grabbing the bag, and I'm taking the back, praise the Lord, and I'm going back to my spot. But I've got three, three packages, I would say three boxes, but I only have one box. I have two bags, and one of the bags is the regular old bag. Okay. Now, our young folks, any volunteers want to come up? I'm not about to beg you. Dan, you already got your candy. Come on up, my brother, my praying brother. Yeah. Come on up. Come on up, singing man. Come on up, sir. Yes, sir, in that red shirt. Stand right there, my friend. How are you doing? What's your name, sir? Trayvon. Trayvon, okay. Trayvon, come on over. What's your name, sir? Zahari. Zahari? All right, man. Good to see you this morning. Hey, one more. I got three packages. I got three packages. Come on up. You've been doing a good job. Come on up. You remember, but you can come up to us. All right. <laughs> All right. Three packages. This is just a paper bag for those who want. Then here, I, I tried to find a nice, nice bag. Yeah, it's Christmas, but it's got sparklies on it. OK, it looks good. Man. All right, everybody. <laughs> And then uh, my, life, my wife likes ordering stuff from Amazon. Praise the Lord. So I didn't have a hard time finding a cardboard box. I'll leave it at that. This is a regular little cardboard box. Nothing altogether extraordinary. It's just a cardboard box. My friend, you were first. Pick whichever one you want. No strings attached, no joke. All right, hold on to it. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. Give what's left, right? <laughs> now, this is what I want you all to do. Y'all just uh, take a seat right over there, anywhere. Open it up. I'm going to come to you. Y'all just sit down. It's okay. Sit down now. No rush. Take your time. Y'all pretend it's Christmas or birthday or something. So just to give you a little background, there were packages. I mean, obviously, we have as we can see. Clearly, all the packages were different. And oftentimes, the reality is that God did not make us all the same. Yes, we look different, we talk different, we sound different. In some cases, we even smell different. But the reality is God did not put us in a printing press and reproduce and replicate clones of each other. We are who we are to the glory of God. What was in yours? What was in yours? Now, don't worry, don't stress. I'm going to go ahead and tell you now, it's $5 in coins. I ain't going to make it pour them out and count Five dollars. What was in yours? Five dollars. So even though the packages were different, one package looked great and was sparkly and was sold only on special occasions. Uh, this package looked a certain way. The other package was wrinkled up and crinkled up and it was just a paper bag. And, and the other package was just a box. It was just a box. Yeah. Nothing great, nothing bad, just a box. But within each of those packages, there was value. Oh, you can keep the money. That's yours. You can keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. And so within each of those packages was value. But if you notice that just from the outside looking in, Reverend Lily, we could not see the value simply from the outside looking in. Greg, you saw you saw the stuff right there, but because you don't have x-ray vision, uh, you didn't see what was on the inside. Uh, how many of us are going through life right now uh, basing our value on what people see and forgetting that God has put the value on the inside? I've come to realize that when we truly recognize who God made us to be, we don't have to worry about the outside. Yes. Psalms 139, I'm going to go back to the Bible. Make sure I gave at least two scriptures, Reverend Mitchell, before we leave. I'll give them two. Y'all want three, just send me a text message. I'll give you three next time. <laughs> Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14, just a couple of couple verses here. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm, come on now, fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Amen. If you're 13 to 20, if you're in the buzz department, if you're on the senior citizens roster, and maybe just maybe you just started a family, whoever you are, wherever you are, you might not even be a member of 
the enemy Zion church. But wherever you find yourself, never forget that you are fearfully yes, and wonderfully made. Yes, yes. Next time the enemy messes with your life, when he tells you what you can do, yes, you just tell yourself, God ain't making no joke out there. necessity 
of giving your life to Christ. It's good to sing on the choir. It's good to present. It's even good to pray and read scripture. But we must also know that hell is real, Amen. but heaven is real too. Amen. And so if you have not given your life to Christ, if you have not made a confession of faith, we do offer this opportunity now for any who will come. Amen. 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 Listen, let me tell you something. I'm a little different than most folks. This is not the quiet moment. Because if everybody in the place has made a confession of faith, then we should be celebrating and giving God praise. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. At this point, it may not necessarily be any who need to be saved. But right where you are, bow your heads. God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the word, God, that has gone forth. We pray, O oh Lord, that something was said or done that would be a blessing, both in-house and online, God. O oh God, we know your word can transfix many times and spaces, God. Even those who watch the recording, God, we pray that it would be a difference maker, God. Even as we hear the sound of the phone ringing, God, it, it reminds us that transmissions are taking place and that radio waves and sound waves are going out, God. And we thank you for permeating this place. And we ask, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you bless every person that came and let them not regret the time spent on this morning. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we do pray. Amen. It's all yours. We will now have our closing remarks from our youth director, our Christian education director, and the presiding elder. The youth director, Ms. Charlene Evans. The Christian education director, Ms. Carol McGugan, and our presiding elder, Reverend Chalmers McDougall. Good morning. Well, yeah, we're still in the morning. Again, I would just like to thank everyone. Had your hearts not been touched on today? I would like to thank everyone who I've worried, who I've texted, who's texted me, and just all that took part of uh, helping this program to be a success for our youth. Um, my Christian education director, she texted me earlier this morning, we got this, you know, and I, and we appreciate things like that. I appreciate things like that. My pastor texted me, you got pictures? We, what we got to do? You know, everybody just helping to make this program a success. Our musician, uh, our union up musician, Mr. Love, who I texted late last night, <laughs> just to make sure that we were ready for today and ready for you to be here with us at Union Oak. We know that this is a district program and we're not at the district center. However, wherever we worship together is where God resides. So um, I was glad to be in my house today. Um, and I would like to thank our Union Oak family who just stepped in and, and stepped up to help and make sure, and showed up to help and make sure that this was a success. Um, I, I think, so y'all wouldn't know that I knew these children when they was a baby. And they stepped in this morning because you know, COVID protocols, we have to have the mics run down every time. And they were asked to do that. And Trey and Rochelle, they just stepped right in and, and kind of helped us do that, and I thank y'all again. <laughs> and I thank Solomon who stepped in to do our scripture. We had a little technical difficulties with getting on Zoom, and uh, Mondale, who is one of our youth officers, was not able to join in time. But Solomon, I thank you for stepping up. I know Dad calls on y'all a lot. <laughs> it happens on Sunday morning, too. <laughs> so, um, but I do thank you guys for doing that. And that, I, I just want to thank everybody. This is our first, like, in-person youth thing, and I think it was a success. Amen. And so I thank God for that. And I would just, I'm going to turn it over into the hands of our Larnberg District Christian Education Director, Ms. Carol McGugan, to bring remarks. Amen. Good morning. And to God be the glory for the good things that he has done. 
I am excited and I do thank our district youth director, Ms. Evans, for a wonderful job. It's been a long time, even prior to COVID, since we've come together with the youth program. And I just thank God and even my pastor who we're just so excited. I'm sort of uh, doing a double dip here. I'm excited because being the youth director and having the youth program, but I'm excited because I'm at home this morning at Union Oak, and I'm excited because my pastor was a speaker, and I'm excited because the youth director is my member here at church, and so I got a whole lot to be excited about. I forgot that I was supposed to be doing that director thing because I was so excited about being home and wanting everything to be right at home, and so I just thank God this morning. I just thank God for all that he has done and for you showing up. I don't want to take up a lot of time, but I do have a lot to do this morning before our wonderful presiding elder comes. I tell you guys that I do not um, make any, I don't regret this. I worry him. I know it. And uh, he's going to, um, he, well, he knows me, and he, he's good with it. Matter of fact, he's even getting other people to do stuff that he will be doing for me because he said, uh, I got something else to do. Y'all get McGoogie for me. So I just thank God. So I just thank God for my presiding elder this morning. And because I thank God for my presiding elder this morning, and I talked to the pastor, and we wanted to show the gold standard here at Union Oak. And we just love you guys so much. So we're going to ask if Presiding Elder McDougal and Miss McDougal could come up. And um, Reverend Gilcrease, if you and Sister Makita, we want to give our presentation from Union Oak to you just to let you know we love you. From my from my church family, y'all know Sister Kara. She's she's just a, a energetic person, and that's a good thing because it's good to be excited about things of God. So this is to you all. Open it up. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna learn from you. Yeah, we just thank you so much for coming out. Matter of fact, for everybody who's here before you leave today, I know we're celebrating love, and I don't know if you got a Valentine's or not, but we do have some Valentine's candy. I'm looking around. We should be yeah. good. Amen. Yeah. So we have enough for everybody to get a box of Valentine candy it's in the back. back if you desire some. Someone's in the back with the repass. Is it okay? Perfect. It'll be a part of our repast on this morning. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. And stay right there because that was the church part. We wanted to take care of the church part, but we also had for our district of uh, director and Sister Crawford, if you could help me, please. Uh, from the Larnberg District Department of Christian Education. Uh, we want to let you know, Mrs. McDougal, Elder McDougal, De Department, you guys can stand up. Michelle, Timberland, y'all come on, y'all are part of the district now. This isn't a Karen thing. Uh, we love you, and we wanted to let you know how much. So this morning, we want to make sure you had enough chocolate. We wanted to make sure you had chocolate, and also when you got tired of the chocolate, that uh, you had fruit. <laughs> See, <laughs> that you can have some fruit as well. So we just thank God for you this morning. And Lovers, if you could get a picture for us. Um, Brother Mike Miller, he got a picture. He's got a picture. He's got a picture on that video, but I want one on my phone real quick. <laughs> thank you, sir. Well, if you're nice to him, he'll send you one. On will you? Trip. Will you do that, for Brother Miller? To God be the glory. And you and I know that's heavy, so thank you guys so much. And we love you and may God bless you and happy Valentine's Day. Love does conquer all. Amen. Amen. Real quick, we have a couple things that are gonna happen today and Monday, because this week we've been doing some multiple things with Christian education. So later on today, we're getting ready for the Super Bowl tomorrow. Sister Crawford is coming real quick. And Monday, uh, we're getting, Monday is Valentine's Day. Sister Timberly has something for our children. So we're continuously busy with Christian education. We do have a Black History PowerPoint that we're gonna push out for all of you guys to, uh, view at a later date, uh, late, you can view this month for some black pioneers in the AME Zion Church. So good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Ms. McGovern, 
protocol already established. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Uh, I just wanted to share with you with Super Bowl tomorrow, we'll have a cooking and dine that will air later today. Just have some healthy things there that you can have during Super Bowl. But just remember, you know, even though it's healthy, you have to watch the volume, okay? <laughs> and another, and I stand before you also just to remind everyone. Oh, I'm sorry, it will air at 2 o'clock p.m. today. So, so look forward to grabbing that. You see how time to go to the supermarket and pick up some healthy treats uh, that we can enjoy tomorrow. Everyone know that's a passion for me. It's very important to eat healthy, amen? amen. And just wanted to share with you, on Tuesday night, we had our very first uh, book club that aired is Don't Let the Enemy Sit at Your Table. And listening to the pastor this morning, it really just highlighted on what we were studying is to don't allow the enemy which is our mind, and so we listen to what people say before we know it, we are in that moment. So please, our next session will be March the 8th at 7.30. Those of you that have not picked up your book, you still have time, Amazon, uh, get your book and join in with us because it's definitely a treat. Amen, thank you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kimberly Jones. I am the Barrett Children Christian Education Director for our district. On Monday at six o'clock, I know Monday is Valentine's Day. Many of you will probably celebrate today or tomorrow. However we want to celebrate with our children, it is going to be a virtual movie night starting at 6 p.m. on Zoom. And I'll send out the link again or in a message to Stephanie. Um, but it's gonna start out at six o'clock. And I'm asking all churches, I've asked the um, Barrett Children Directors or the Christian Education Directors to prepare and possibly give out on tomorrow to their children and youth who will be participating a movie night package. It can be something as simple as this. There's a bag of popcorn, a juice box, and some candy. So while we're watching the movie together, we can have a snack for our movie night. And we're gonna be watching a movie, it's called The Prodigal Son. Um, it won't be but one hour, six to seven p.m. So please join us on Monday at 6 p.m. for Zoom for our virtual movie night. Amen. 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 And we thank God for the department and for all the work that is going forward. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Charlene, do you want me to talk about the repast? The repast? Yes. Uh, it prepared for you guys in the back. Oh my gosh, delicious, wonderful treats for you. You can come through and everything is decorated with our Black History theme. You can come through, get your treats. You can eat them there, or if you like to walk out with them, make sure you get your box of candy that's been prepared for everybody. So we have a wonderful treat for you in the back. We are looking forward to fellowshipping with you today. To God be the glory. We do thank you, Pastor Gilcrease, again, for being the gold standard this morning, and that presentation was off the chain. We enjoyed that. And now, last but not least, last but not least, my lovely presiding elder, the Reverend Chambers McDougall will come and bless us and greet us. I got another. I'm ready, Mr. Sir. Just wanted to make sure you had to travel a little while to get here. Miss Ellis, if you would join us, if you feel like it. Um, wanted to make sure that you had a little something to put back in your tank. Maybe you want to give us something to eat. You know. Um, you all have been very good to me and Makita. And honestly speaking, we do appreciate the leadership that you bring to this district. Thank you, and, and we know y'all probably got a lot of candy and uh -huh. stuff. And this is a little sweet, but it's not candy. So a nice little custom Valentine basket here with some gourmet popcorn. Thank all of you for being here today. I certainly want to thank the pastor and the Christian Education Director and uh, all of the people in the department for all of the wonderful gifts. Um, I'm, it's difficult for me to accept gifts from people, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll get used to it. So <laughs> don't stop. I'll get, I'll get used to it. And, uh, you know, when I used to do a lot of preaching, uh, my wife used to say, people used to offer me a gift, and my wife and I would say no, 
And my wife would always tell me, look at me. When they offer, just look at me. <laughs> and she said, look at me and just pass it on. So I learned, I've learned to do that. Amen? Amen. Allison, you, you did a wonderful job this morning. Yeah. And you, uh, you get your mom to bring you over to the house. Uh, she used to come over to our house all the time. Where your mom? She was in the back. Yeah, get ready. She done talked about all the food they got. Some of you tipping out the front door. Y'all know y'all coming around. <laughs> and then and then they talk about all the good food and then they give me the microphone. Now you know they folk ready to go. <laughs> Maybe y'all should let me talk first. That way. I'm just saying, amen. God bless you. Listen, love all of you. It's just so good to see. Listen, I need about seven or eight or nine of you young people to kind of follow. Things are different now than they've ever been. Yeah. We're trying to do this video. I got lost coming. I don't know how I got lost. I mean, this is a place I know. And I come down 95 to get here fast because we already left. Gonna leave the house at 9. It was 9.07, so I felt a little late. I had told uh, Brother McMillan I'd be here 9.20, 9.30, so I was already behind the time. And man, I'm zooming down the road, down 95, looking over at this beautiful woman in the car with me. And uh, I saw the sign said exit 41. I kept going. I said, no, I'm going. I'm looking for Highway 301. And man, when I knew something, I was in uh, St. Paul. I said, how did I get way down here? <laughs> but once you miss that turn, there's no place else to turn. I'm like, I've got to be able to get back over there, but I, you can't do it. So. I followed the law. I didn't try to go through none of them little holes where the highway patrolman might go if we trying to catch it. I didn't do that. Amen. Besides that, I had washed the car last week. I didn't want to get it too dirty this week. Amen. When I was young, I used to wash car every day. And then when I got to middle age, I washed it once a week. Now I'm old. I don't care if it get washed or not. As long as it'll go when I push the button. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all got to have it shined up. I just don't care. As long as that baby go and I want to go, I'm good. Listen, I want to thank all of you again for being here today. It's just wonderful. Y'all out here, so many of you got on your red, uh, uh, I guess, representative of this love, agape. Matter of fact, she said agape in love. Somebody called me one time and said, where did I find agape in the Bible? All, everywhere you find love is agape. <laughs> but, but don't look for the word agape. It's a Greek word, and we're reading out of an English translation. So you're not going to see agape. Amen? Amen. Uh, but I certainly want to thank the pastor for a wonderful, uh, a wonderful presentation. I, I wanted to take some credit for that, but honestly, his mom and dad... And uh, not just his mom and dad, but his church family, which was an AME Zion church family in New Bethel, and all the wonderful people that have poured in his life all of these years. Now, he left us for a minute, uh, a hot minute, amen? Uh, but somehow or another, the Lord led him and his family back to the AME Zion church, and, and, we, and we're so wonderfully blessed by their presence, thank amen? amen? So we thank God for it. Uh, so, uh, Daniel, you and uh, Solomon, y'all be hanging around with Dad. Y'all can be one of the folk that are helping me. I honestly need some young people. The stuff you see me doing, I don't need to be doing. I'm not good at it anyway. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> and you young folk know how to do it. And I, I asked some of my older people that were helping me about a, a program we can use called Switcher, which means that we can have at least eight or at, at maximum nine of you with your cameras Matter of fact, Makita, we lost signal on this iPad while we were doing the Zoom. Makita saw that, picked it up, and was able to continue on with what we were doing. And then it took me a while to get the pad back on. Now, with a program we call Switcher, I can use eight or nine of you. You have your cameras as long as you've got, uh, especially iPhones, amen, the Apple products. We can, in fact, use that, and you can be taking pictures, and we can determine which of your pictures are going. You know about it already? All right, we're going to make it happen. Amen? But I need some young people to work along with me. Listen, I'm tired of depending on old folk. They don't like to get up early. They don't like to be up late. Amen? I'm just telling you how it is. And listen, I'm glad to see so many young people. I thought about it when I was sitting there. Listen, I, uh, listen, I'm going to get old if I live. And it's good to know we got some Christian young people that are coming up 
if I have to go to a rest home, they'll be there to take care of me. If I wind up at the hospital, they'll be the doctors and the nurses. If I need a lawyer, they'll be in the courtroom with me. Y'all can say what you want them. We gonna need them. And I want to know they grew up in the church. Can you see yourself laying on the hospital bed and they thinking about lunch and they say, I ain't got time for them. Let them die. I'm just saying, you need to be nice to them. <laughs> Matter of fact, my wife had a stroke and we were at the hospital and they had rolled us out and she didn't, they didn't have no room or nothing for us or something. And one young lady that grew up across the street from us and I used to watch them when she get on the bus in the morning, mom and dad going to work. I felt like I was kind of the protector. And I used to tell her dad, she ain't got nothing to worry about. And listen, when they rolled my wife down there, she rolled down there and she said, oh, Miss Allen, she knew her. She said, no, I got a place for you. Pull us right on it. Let me tell you now. I'm just telling you. You do what you need to do now. God bless you. Thank you all for being. Amen. Amen. And young folk. When we make a mistake, just just count it. Just you just say they don't. Just get no. They don't know no better. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just say they set in their ways. <laughs> just let them go. Amen. Amen. But again, I need I need some of you, especially if you got driver's license. Whenever we have stuff, or if you can convince mom or dad to come and bring you out, and um, I want you to get get your name and number to uh, to, to to Pastor Gilcrease. I'm on. I'm going to give him the full charge over this thing so he can, and uh, we're going to make it happen. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Love you. What am I supposed to do? We do a benediction? Yes, do a grace? Yes, sir. All right. May the peace of God, may God's wisdom, his love, and his understanding forever be with you and guide your way in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us all sing together. Now, uh, Tell him I ain't got nobody but she's on the same I'm getting 
Yeah. Wow. 